Now, Diotrephes, not a good guy. He may be a prominent part of the church, at least in his own mind, but John says that that kind of attitude, he is an evil doer. It is very clear that he hasn't truly encountered any personal knowledge of God or his will. When he says he hasn't seen God, he doesn't know God, he's not been touched by him. He hasn't been affected by him. He is oblivious to what God's love ought to bring about in a human being. He clearly does not know God. Because if he did, he would have been changed and he would be loving. Diotrephes is not the guy who should be in charge of the church. He's not the host of the, the hospitality committee. He's not a greeter. He's not a door opener. He's not even in charge of the coffee. I wouldn't put him in charge of the trash collection. He is not a godly man. Now, the diametrical opposite of Diotrephes is also a part of the church. Di uh, Demetrius is a much better role model than Diotrephes. Would you say Demetrius with me? Demetrius? I knew you could. Demetrius is a doing good one, literally. And he is from God. There have been really great reports about Demetrius. Um, there's honorable testimony about how he has behaved himself. He always welcomes people from the outside. And when John talks about how he accepts people and welcomes them, um, the, the word that John uses can mean welcome or, or to receive hospitably, but it carries the idea of taking up someone in order to raise them up on high. In my, in my brain... When I hear those words, I imagine that um, Demetrius and two or three other people from the church greet the guests at the front door. They rolled out the red carpet. They pick them up on their chair and they, they usher them in like they are the, the king, the queen. The, these are special guests. Um, uh, they are celebrated. And they're served. Demetrius is all about extending hospitality to express simple, godly love. It is agape love. Unconditional, sacrificial love made evident in real life. Demetrius is a very good guy. Welcoming, friendly, um, generous, sacrificial. Demetrius and Gaius are both good men. Um, John says that there's a lot of testimony about the, fa uh, the faithfulness and the love of Gaius, uh, about the, the testimony of, of hospitality and the accepting nature of Demetrius. And that comes from the church and from the church leaders, from people outside the church, and from John himself. They all testify um, honestly about the fact that this is doing good. He is a doing good one. The doing evil ones, that's how he refers to Diotrephes. The doing evil ones have not encountered or experienced God. We said that a few weeks ago that the, um, the fruit reveals the root. It's the only clever thing I've ever come up with in 30 years of ministry. The fruit reveals the root. Um, in these very different men, the condition of their hearts is demonstrated by their attitudes and actions. Demetrius's heart has been changed by God's Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit radiates out of him in all directions, and it lands on everyone that gets close enough. The heart of Diotrephes is unchanged, and he is just as self-serving and self-absorbed and self-loving as ever. And it is obvious in his beliefs and his behavior. The fruit reveals the root. So what's John's point? Well, I think it comes down to um, about six little words there. Um, imitate the good, reject the bad. Doing good is to imitate God. God set 
a pattern for the world in Jesus, who came and loved and welcomed and sacrificed unconditionally. He didn't just reach out to the sweet people who were clean and, um, and God-fearing and respectable, who kept their lawns mowed and their taxes paid uh, and observed quiet hours in the HOA. He loved the people who were caught in the middle of heinous, ungodly behavior. He embraced those people who were on the outskirts and literally the outskirts of town, cast out by everybody else. He welcomed those who needed God, who, who wanted him. God sets that pattern for us to follow, to love sacrificially and unconditionally and to extend that warm welcome, lifting our guests up in very special ways. Demetrius followed a pattern. Diotrephes rejected it. We need to imitate the good example. We need to avoid wolves in sheep's clothing. We've said already lots of times, we need to examine the, the spiritual messages that we hear. Do they stand up with the rest of Scripture, or are they coming in out of deep, deep roving right field out from outer space? We need to listen to the word of truth. Gaius did. Demetrius did. John did. Diotrephes didn't. And, and lots of other people. We don't need to just hear the word, but we need to put into practice the truth that we've heard and received. Uh, Paul talks about that uh, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Whatever we've been taught, whatever we've received, we need to put those things into practice. We need to live them out every single day. Not just to hear it once in a while, or to think it's a good idea, or to even say amen at church. But we need to put those things into uh, the core of our being. Let's warmly welcome those from outside into our church family. It is a beautiful thing to watch a church family meet new folks, to introduce themselves, to connect them to somebody else with whom they may have something in common. Um, to uh, to invite them to sit beside them and worship, to show them the way to donuts, um, it, it can be any kinds of thing. It is great to see the church warmly welcoming everybody who comes inside uh, in, inside our walls. We need to make sure that that sense of hospitality doesn't just exist inside the building at forty three forty seven South nineteen hundred West Roy Utah. That wherever we are is a place to extend God's hospitality. We need to show it to those who are working for the truth. Whenever we have somebody who's uh, doing God's work someplace else in the world, whether it is in Africa or South America or or Idaho or wherever, uh, we need to be sure to warmly uh, warmly welcome them uh, to make sure that they're well fed, that they're well, uh, well cared for, that they're housed, that they're comfortable, that they know how much we appreciate the, the work that they're doing in their ministry. We need to work together with them for the truth. It's great to say, hey, why don't you come and stay at our house while you're here in town with us this weekend? Uh, it's something else altogether to say, uh, put, put me on your prayer chain. Um, let me know what's going on in ministry. Can I, can I pray with you and for you? Um, what kind of things can I send to you? Is there, is, there a, is there an amount of money that you need? Is there a piece of equipment that we can apply for you? Well, let's find a way to work together with them. And the last thing I have written down is that we need to allow God's truth to change us from the inside through his word of truth and through his Holy Spirit who reminds us of his truth. Okay, it, it is not enough, uh, it doesn't work to fake it on the outside until you make it. 
we need to be sure that we are inviting God into the deepest part of our lives, turning it all over to say, I'm screwing this up on my own. I can only get better with your direction. I need you to change who I am. You will never be good enough on your own. You'll never get it right. You can be the eaglest Boy Scout that there is. You may write the biggest checks in the world for charity, but you will never, you will never become the person that God wants you to be unless you allow him into your life to make those changes. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we ask that, uh, that we would take to heart the example that um, these men set for us, both the good ones and the bad ones. Lord, we want to be warmly welcome, uh, w- welcoming, accepting uh, whoever comes uh, up before us. We don't want to ever hold them at arm's length because of the way they look or the way they smell or the way they vote or the way they identify where they're from in the world. We, we don't want to hold anybody at arm's length. We want to embrace them with the love of Jesus just as we have been embraced. Lord, we ask that you would um, be with us um, this morning through the rest of the day, through the rest of the week as we go into this new season. Uh, We pray, Lord, that we would be men and women who are committed to extending your love just like John, just like these good men. We are grateful for the change that you have made in us, for the changes you are constantly making in us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, as the band uh, comes back up, uh, we'll, we get to do something today that we don't often do on a Sunday morning, sort of because of the, some of the limitations we have. <coughs> uh, we're going to offer um, an invitation, Jesus' invitation. If, if you have never confessed Christ as Lord, um, if you know that you desperately need him to come into your life to make those changes and you're ready to begin a new life with him, um, while we sing this next song, I want you to just come up here and, and sit on this front row. Um, uh, we'll, we'll talk to you in just a, a minute about what your decision is. If you're already a believer in Jesus and you want to claim Roy Christian Church as your home, you're going to say officially, I'm in, I'm here, you are my people. Um, then I invite you to come and and uh, and make that decision as well. Uh, we're gonna sing this uh, this next song, Lord, I need you. Uh, and if you need to respond in one of those ways, um, or you desperately need some prayer about something, uh, why don't you come up and and meet us here in the front row?
requests have come in this last week. Um, some of you remember Jim and Carol Garropy. They were uh, part of the for uh, c- close to 40 years, at least if not if not 50. Um, they moved away to Joplin, Missouri um, a few years back. Uh, Carol called this last week to let us know that Jim passed away. Um, they had a, a, a short, small uh, funeral service there and um, uh, they would just appreciate your your prayers. Uh, we'll have their contact information in the newsletter this week. Marty Fleming's sister Darlene has a heart problem, uh, as well as being recently diagnosed with small cell carcinoma. Molly Mackey, we've been praying for her um, for several weeks. Uh, she is anticipating further surgery on her leg, uh, which is probably going to make some changes to the, the prosthesis that they're um, making for her. Jody Aguirre's grandfather in Texas, isn't doing well. They've gone uh, to be with him. And Teresa Eskew had gallbladder surgery this week. It went very well. Uh, she's here and a little sore, um, so don't squeeze her very hard, but she appreciates all your prayers uh, for her as well. Uh, let's, uh, let's pray together. I'll give you a, a moment or two to pray silently, and then I'd like for you to join me uh, with the Lord's Prayer from Matthew 7 at the end. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We want to pray the way that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Although you may not, you may not want to because of the next... Go ahead. Don't forget, last, a couple weeks ago we learned about what amen means. What does it mean? I agree. This song is all about we're agreeing. Oh, and um, while we sing, while we sing this song, um, four guys are going to come and pass the offering trays around in front of you. So, four guys, the trays are right up here. We've never done it this way before. All right. So, four guys come grab an offering tray, uh, go through the congregation while we sing. So, ready? If you can do that clap, it's two and one. One, two, three, four! You are not alone if you are alone. Amen. 
All right, you can come back and find your seat. Um, we've got uh, one, uh, one song to get us into the mood for the Lord's Supper, and then Mark Acker is going to come and share a few thoughts about communion with us. Um, so if you'd have a seat, uh, we'll sing one more song.
up and to share a few thoughts about communion. I'll also ask uh, again for uh, for God to, um, uh, to pass out cups uh, to everybody um, while Mark is, is talking. Um, there are two stacked cups, uh, bread on the bottom, grape juice on the top. Um, be sure to grab both of those and we'll all partake in unison together. motion that caught my attention. Back on July 20th, 1969, Apollo's Eagle land, uh, lunar module had landed on the surface of the moon. And prior to that flight, astronaut Buzz Aldrin asked for and received permission to bring wine and bread so he could take communion on the surface of the moon. Before stepping on the surface of the moon, Aldrin read scripture, took communion, and viewed no small. A lot of things for him to think about at the time. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Lots of things for him to, there you go, think about. Uh, this was up there in importance to Buzz Aldrin. The devotion said that his actions proclaimed Christ, sacrifice on the cross, and guaranteed of his second coming. I do remember that back then. I was 19 tells you how this guy really is. But somehow back then, escaped me. I was a headstrong, self-centered teen back then, and the only things on my radar were friends, girls, cars, and motorcycles. Things have changed. All these years later, I'm quite certain a request like this would be summarily dismissed and denied and produce a storm of social media comments. The communion remembrance of, of Jesus, what Jesus did for us in space not, might not make it today. It doesn't change what we still do how and why. Quoting the devotion again, whenever and wherever we take communion, we're proclaiming the trust in the reality of Jesus' sacrifice and our hope in his promised second coming. No matter where we are, we can celebrate our faith in the one and the only risen and returning Savior, Jesus Christ, with confidence. So everybody's got the cup spray with me, please. Gracious God, it's no small thing that you sent your son Jesus to us here to pay, pay the price for us necessary to secure our place with you in eternity. Even as we do this, every time we gather to worship, the gratitude in our hearts is no small thing. Thank you, God, for loving us as you do. Thank you for Jesus for taking our place on the cross. The First Corinthians has an account of uh, the Last Supper for Jesus. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread 
And when, that, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Whenever you do, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. One last song, simple. God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I'll seek you in the morning and learn to walk in your ways, and I'll follow you all of my days. Let's stand uh, with this song of uh, a prayer of commitment. everything up. Uh, if you want to uh, go to your cars, get whatever you need, uh, the food line is going to start at this end and go toward the grill. Um, there are brats and dogs. Go easy the first time through. I'm sure there will be plenty um, by the time we're done. All right. So um, we'll, we'll holler in a few minutes and pray and